This is an area that we're very strong. We added composites in Indian Astrum, I want to say 1995. But we became more of a leader in composites probably around 2000. More and more structures today are being made out of composites, um, entire aircraft. And uh, it's a little unnerving because when metal fails, what it does is it tends to bend and, and bend before it ruptures. So, you know, a bent wing is still a functioning wing for the most part. When a composite structure fails, um, when a ply fails or a fiber fails, it snaps. And the fiber's gone. And I guess it would be more analogous to a rope that starts to break. And when you watch a rope breaking, you see the fibers starting to fail. That's kind of what happens with composites, and that's that progressive ply failure. So you can hear the little snap, crackle, pop as, as individual fibers start to fail. And um, being able to simulate that is important because people that design aircraft need to know when do we think the thing is really going to fail so we can say, okay, this is how much extra we've got beyond where you're supposed to take it. The limit load is where you're supposed to, to take the structure. You're not supposed to go beyond that in operation. And then you put in a, a, a factor of safety above, above and beyond that. But what you also need to know is you need to know, well, okay, so I reach limit and I go beyond that. Something extreme happens. When does the wing fall off? And that's what progressive ply does for you. It tells you that. Up to, I want to say, um, the mid-2000 time frame, around 2003, 2004, around there, um, there weren't really a lot of uh, new failure theories being used in FEA, in the big codes like NASTRAN. Um, what would happen is that there were failure theories that were developed by different people like um, Psy and Wu and Hill and Hoffman, and they, their names are the failure theories that are in NASTRAN. And they would predict, you know, okay, so we have a composite. We have to come up with some way of predicting failure of this thing because it's not like metal. It doesn't really yield and then, and, then, and then fail at some limit load or some design value that you can predict very easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some assumptions. And you have classical laminate theory. And classical laminate theory has been around forever, and we still use it for the 2D stuff. And we kind of use it for 3D, too. And all it is is it says we're going to take this structure and we're going to divide it up into little plies. And each ply, we're going, to, we're going to be able to measure the strain in the ply. And then if we know the strain, we can calculate what the stress is. If we know the stress, we can predict when it's going to fail, you know, based on the, what the ply is made of. And the technology improved in the early 2000 time frame for unidirectional composites. Now, those are the kind that uh, where all the plies are going in one direction, and then they lay that up, and then they lay up all the plies going in another direction, and then a layer of that. It's not cloth. It's called tape. And the reason why they call it tape is it comes in rolls, and usually it's, it's what's called prepreg, where they go in and they put resin in it. And you can apply more resin, lay it up, and then they vacuum bag it. They put it in an autoclave, they heat it, and they cure it. And then in the end, you have a composite that doesn't have any voids or air or... All the fibers are very tight together. And where MCT has come in is that MCT is able to model composites on a micro-mechanical level. And what that means is that they look at well, what's actually going on between the fiber and the matrix and the stresses in the fiber versus the stresses in the matrix. And that allows them to have a much better, more accurate prediction of when failure is going to occur. And it uses a lot more information about the material than other failure theories use. And we're currently using that information. It goes into the MCT calculation, and we've coupled that with our progressive plot failure analysis. And now in V10.1, we've got 3D MCT. So we're able to do MCT for solids as well as for um, shells and progressive plot failure for the shells. In, in the early, mid-2000 time frame, 2003, 2004, we had LARC and PUP as failure theories that were really revolutionary for how they handled um, tape or unidirectional materials. We still did not have anything good for predicting cloth. Now, cloth 
is a zero ninety layup. And the way you can think of cloth is, is just look at your shirt. The way that they weave it is I have a fiber this way, I have another fiber going underneath, and it's, they just kind of go under and over, under and over. And that will give you a zero ninety kind of layup. And you can even orient it. You can say, well, I've got a zero ninety this way, and then I've got a minus forty five, plus forty five, you know, by rotating the whole thing. And, and, and you can have different orientations with cloth. So that's what MCT added. And also unidirectional and three-dimensional. With the MCT, it looks at the 3D stress state. So it's considering the stresses in this direction and also transverse direction as well. So it knows if there's going to be a matrix failure, for example, due to a delamination. It knows that.